What's going on guys, it's Justin here, and well, we're finally gonna do it. After all the upgrades we've made to our Jeep Gladiator project, we're saying goodbye to our stock brakes at long last. Our Gladiator was a good sport while we did some mild to a little wild off-roading, but now we're gonna be using this thing to tow our enclosed trailer around as well, and plus, this thing already has a larger than stock wheel and tire package. But first, be sure to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel so you don't miss out on any of our latest content. We'll continue with the unboxing of our front and rear brakes before we turn any wrenches, but I did get this thing racked up and the front wheels yanked off it because that's where we're gonna be starting. So let's jump right into the front and rear brake kits and the front kits include, along with the rear, these amazing ductile iron calipers. Now, these things are big, beefy four piston calipers that will really give us the braking force that we're looking for and they're solid mounting because all the floating like a traditional caliper is done between the four pistons versus a floating bracket like the stock Jeep brakes. So we're gaining more braking force because we've added two more pistons. Now these come loaded with Alcon's performance pads which will really also complement our braking power. Also included is a caliper bracket and all the necessary hardware to mount this stuff. Now, starting off, this rotor is oversized to go along with our oversized caliper, so we have more braking surface. It's also vented, which is gonna help cool the brakes, along with some scallops cut into the surface, which help brake gases release from in between the rotor and pad, and will really help with our braking performance. Now, the rear kit includes all these things as well, plus a set of braided rear lines to allow the calipers to fit properly. So enough talking about these awesome parts, let's jump right in to the install. So we're gonna start off our brake install by pulling off our caliper off our bracket, and then I'm gonna hang that out of the way and get the caliper bracket removed. So I'm just gonna hang that out of the way on a strap. So there is two 21 millimeter bolts that hold the caliper bracket on. We're gonna head and get those removed. With the factory caliper bracket removed, we can go ahead and remove the retention pin for the rotor. With all the factory braking components removed, it's time to start installing new parts. I'm gonna go ahead and clean off the rotor with some brake clean. So get that on there, start to check some fitment because I wanna run our factory brake shields still as well to keep rocks and debris out of the back and then get the caliper bracket installed, our caliper hung, and then our factory brake line attached. Then it's to the other side and then to the rear. So let's go grab a can of brake clean and get that rotor clean. A tip I have for you guys when you're gonna clean your rotors, if they come in a box like this, I highly recommend leaving them in the box to kind of just mitigate the mess a little bit. So the rotor is clean now. Thinking about how I wanna install this stuff, I'm actually going to install the caliper bracket first because I think with the rotor off there, it's gonna be easier. So we're gonna do that. I'm holding our caliper bracket here. And if you notice on the caliper bracket, it has the word disc machined into one side and that is gonna face the brake rotor. So they are directional. They actually have a bevel on the back side here. Um, so yeah, make sure the disc faces the brake rotor itself. I am gonna grab the torque wrench and torque these to the factory specifications. So now I'm gonna check rotor fitment against the dust shield. So these rotors are a little bit larger, I would say significantly larger than the factory one. But that's what these are all about is this is a performance brake package. You know, we've increased our wheel and tire size substantially, so that's a ton more rotating mass and it takes a little bit more to stop. So the cool part about this kit as well is that they include all the hardware you need, so there's no guessing. So these are our new caliper bolts. Next, we'll get the caliper thrown on. Now, since these are not factory bolts, there is not a torque spec in the factory manual for them, but Alcon does include one. So 
when I throw the wrench on these inside bolts here in a minute, I'll do these ones as well. So I grabbed my torque wrench, my short 21 millimeter socket, and I looked up the torque spec for the caliper mounting bolts, and they are a 148 foot pounds from the knuckle to the bracket. And then these are 168 newtons, I believe is what they're rated in. I'm gonna do the conversion and figure out the foot pounds here in a second, guys. I did a little bit of math to figure out what the torque spec is on these. And I'm gonna say 125 foot pounds is right there in kind of the range they give us. So let's get those torqued. So everything is torqued on this side. So this part of the install is good to go. We're going to now remove the factory brake line from the caliper and install it on our new caliper. Now, because our Jeep has RCVs in it, and we'll talk about that in a later episode, you know, with RCVs, you get a little bit of grease um, coming out and going everywhere. And so before I remove the caliper line, I'm gonna go ahead and clean some of the, a little bit of the excess grease off, and then we'll get it installed. When I say they include everything for this install, I really mean it. And they even throw a set of extra long banjo bolts in the box to adapt our factory lines to our calipers. So I'm gonna go ahead and get those installed next. Now, a good idea is that every time you remove one of these, you replace the copper sealing washers. Because after you loosen and tighten these a bunch of times, they get thinner, they get thin spots, and you will get a leak that you cannot seal and Brake systems are very important. Safety is key. So this is a tighten once and throw away kind of part. We are gonna work fast so we don't lose too much fluid. That is not ideal. That's all coming out of the caliper. Wipe all the brake fluid off the caliper. can of our Summit Racing all-purpose cleaner. So for right now, that basically finishes up this side. So we're gonna move to the driver side, get that one installed, and then jump to the back calipers. After we get all the brakes installed, we're gonna go ahead and bleed them and then go out and test this thing to see how much of a difference these new brakes made. So let's jump into the other side. The front's finished up. Now we're at the back of the Jeep, ready to start the rear brake install. This is very similar to the front, except that we're gonna be changing the brake line here too. And the reason for that is, is when they designed this kit, I talked to the guys over at Alcon and this rear line doesn't cooperate with the caliper. So we're gonna switch this to a braided line. No big deal, it will be super easy. I'm also gonna take our ABS wire, disconnect it from the rubber brake line here and then I'll figure out a way to attach that to the new steel braided line. The caliper is unbolted here. I'm just gonna get it and swing it out of the way. A great tip for you guys when you're doing brake work is to grab a couple of these rubber tarp straps. We sell these right on the Summit Racing website. We'll have a link in the description. But I like to use these for a whole host of things, but hanging stuff out of the way like this caliper, they really shine. Um, you can't beat them because they have little hooks on the end and you can find all sorts of nooks and crannies to hook these in on vehicles. So grab yourself some tarp straps and, you know, not just brake calipers, all sorts of different stuff. Like when I'm working on control arms, I'll use them to get them out of the way. It kind of just depends, but they're extremely useful and these are a staple in any shop. Calipers out of the way, now time to get the bracket out of the way. These are 18 millimeter bolts and I'm just gonna grab my little breaker bar here. We have the bracket and the rotor removed. I'm gonna go ahead and clean a couple of this stuff up, pre-fit the rotor to make sure the shield clears and that kind of stuff. And then we're just gonna start putting it back together. We'll start with the caliper bracket and go from there. So yeah, very, very similar to the front. It's not a whole lot different, 
but we'll get the rotor and the bracket on and everything, and then we'll jump into switching the brake line. So I pre-fitted the rotor to make sure it cleared the shield and everything, and that the e-brake pads were backed off enough where the rotor would slide all the way on, so we don't have to worry about that. So I'll go ahead and wipe it down. Rotor's all clean, and after looking at this, just like the front, it's gonna make my life easier to install the caliper bracket first and then put the rotor on, so I'm gonna go ahead and do that. That is one thing I will say, is kind of depending on your application. Um, you know, Loctite makes all sorts of different ones, and for this kind of stuff, I really love this stick because I can put it exactly where I want it, and I don't have to worry about it dripping everywhere. This side out towards the brake disc, now, something I will always tell you guys is these are not good and tight kind of bolts. Nothing is on a vehicle. Um, I always like to grab my torque wrench and properly torque all the fasteners and check everything as well. So before I get too ahead of myself, I'm going to grab my wrench and get these torqued. But I do need to look up the torque spec first. So let's do that and get these nice and tight. Caliper bracket is on. Now it's time for our rotor. slides right over our e-brake pads and from here it's time for a caliper and these things are cool like I explained to you guys kind of a little bit before this is a solid mounted caliper and then since it's a four piston this is where all the floating happens versus your conventional caliper that's mounted to a floating bracket with only two pistons and with four pistons we're gaining braking force on both sides of it so it should really improve our stopping power and take this little piece out and this just spaces everything apart. So I checked our rotor fitment, but one thing I did not check until I went to go put the caliper on was the shield fitment to the caliper. And so since the caliper is so much larger, it actually hits kind of like right here and a couple other spots. So I'm gonna grab my tin snips and I'm gonna modify this shield to where the caliper clears because we don't want to get rid of this because these keep a ton of dirt and debris out of our braking system. So we want to leave them, but we're going to make them fit with our new calipers. So let me grab my tin snips and I'm going to start trimming this. So I'm just going to start off by kind of cutting these level with this bracket. And I think that might give me enough room. So we're ready to go back together. I have this bracket back bolted on and torqued and what I did to trim the shield is I grabbed some tin snips here and started to trim the ears away and then I also had to trim it here on the inside so to do that I grabbed the Milwaukee hacksaw and went ahead and kind of ran the blade along here and got it trimmed and then deburred everything and so yeah we're ready to go put the rotor on and caliper now that it all fits. And I'm sure some of you guys are gonna ask why I didn't um, pull the brake shield off and trim it off the Jeep. And the simple answer is to pull this brake shield off, I actually have to pull the axle shafts out. And we didn't really wanna do that because that requires draining all the diff fluid and this stuff doesn't have a whole lot of miles on it. So it's very counterintuitive to pull it all apart. We're trying to save ourselves some time and some money. So you definitely can trim these right on the Jeep and not worry about it. So with the rotor on, the rotor's all the way seated, it's time to get the caliper on. So I checked the instructions and the torque spec on these are 64 foot pounds. So they're a little bit less than the fronts. Glad we checked, but yep, we're gonna torque those to 64. It's time to get our brake line installed. So I'm just gonna start the banjo bolt down here. One of the tools that I do love for brake line work is um, actual flare wrenches and Summit Racing sells an amazing set that comes in actually a really handy tool roll with all the common sizes. So I do recommend those and we will link these in the description, but everybody should have a set of line wrenches in their box and it makes brake work that much easier. Now, I did figure kind of out the way I want to route this because to help, we're going to cycle a ton of this brake fluid out, but to just kind of help preserve fluid and not getting it all over the place, we're going to switch this, what I like to call rather quickly. So 
get that broke loose. So we have our stainless line installed and snugged up. I can go ahead and get this caliper out of the way. Now when we go to get everything finalized and situated, I'll attach the ABS wire to the line here and make sure this isn't hitting anything or rubbing on stuff. But yeah, it uh, actually turned out really good and the other side should go even faster. So let's get to it. So our brakes are all installed. Now it's time to get to bleeding. And to bleed these, we're gonna be using our power bleeder with some of our Summit Racing Dot 4 high temperature brake fluid and a couple of these brake fluid capture bottles to make sure fluid doesn't get everywhere. We're also gonna grab our gear wrench scan tool and run the ABS module on this thing just to make sure we have all the air out of it. So let's get to it. I've gone ahead and thrown our late model Mopar adapter on top of our brake fluid bottle, and now I'm just gonna connect it to our power bleeder. That's what I do like about this thing is it's all quick disconnect and nice. So with that hooked up, my bottle's tight, unlock my handle. So I got about 20 pounds in my brake system right now. I'm gonna start at the farthest caliper away from us which is that back corner, and then I'll work my way around to the closest. So starting at the caliper farthest from the master cylinder, we've gone ahead and thrown our capture bottle, removed the cover off the bleeder and thrown our capture bottle on. I'm just gonna grab my 11 millimeter wrench, put it on the bleeder and crack it open. And right away I can see some fluid coming, but I still got a lot of bubbles. So I'm just gonna let this bleed out here for a second. Now I'm gonna repeat this three times and then go make sure there's still pressure in the pressure bleeder and then move to the next wheel. And I'm gonna end up going around the vehicle probably about three times. So I'm gonna shut this one and move to the next wheel. So we've gone ahead and hit all these one time. And these little fluid bottles are really handy when bleeding brakes because it keeps you from getting fluid everywhere. Now I'm gonna go ahead and pump the power bleeder back up, hit all these one more time, cycle the brakes with the ABS tool, which that gear wrench tool works awesome. And then just continue to bleed these until we don't get any more air out of it. I do love using the power bleeder because it turns this into a one man job and I don't have to rely on somebody pumping the pedal inside the car. So let's check the power bleeder and hit these a couple more times. So we're gonna actuate our ABS with our scan tool. I'm just gonna hit auto scan. We've gone ahead and completed our ABS bleed procedure with the gear wrench scan tool right here. Now to see all the features this thing has and more, check out the video we did on it right on our YouTube channel. And just like that, our Alcon big brake upgrade is all complete. Now, this thing uses a larger than factory rotor, so it has more thermal mass, and that'll allow you to pull more heat out of the brakes, so you can stay in the brakes harder, longer, and not worry about brake fade. Combined with a more aggressive pad and some more clamping force from this four piston caliper, this brake upgrade is gonna be awesome on our Gladiator, and we're definitely gonna be able to tell the difference. So I'm gonna get the wheels thrown back on this thing, and we're gonna go out and test it. So until next time, I'm Justin with Summit Racing, and the golden question is, what's stopping you?